All right, Matt, so we move on to our next fight. This is going to be really tough on the talking. But when we look at this one, we have Marcelo Rojo and Tram Jim taking on Francis Marshall, the fire marshal. And when I do these videos, I go out and I listen to interviews and I watch the fight tape and I watch the regional fight stuff. And we did a bit of a breakdown. This is going to give me a chance to get a drink before we get into this too far. But on Francis Marshall's UFC debut on, really, it was Dana White's Contender Series, he had a really interesting fight that came up this past summer. So we're going to throw it on back to our Contender Series breakdown, and then we're going to insert the portion about Marshall versus Rojo, because I think this is a really interesting fight and a clash of styles as well. Certainly. You know the guys from Fight Night Picks for their weekly UFC previews and predictions. Live shows like Question Mark Kicks in the South. Sidekick. Thanks to your support, they're adding a new show to the channel. If you're an MMA fan, you're going to want to join in the action of Dana White's Contender Series. So as they always say, let's get into it. Next fight at 145 pounds, you have undefeated 5 and 0 squaring off Francis Marshall taking on Connor Matthews and don't get it twisted. Like, to me, these guys seem like ultimate fighter guys. Like, we have the great. ultimate fighter finale coming up this weekend. Heavyweight and women's flyweight. These two guys just have experience against lesser levels of competition. I mean, whether it's with CES, Cage Titan, so on and so forth. When I'm talking about Conor Matthews or for Francis Marshall on some of those lower scales. I mean, you go through their overall records. I mean, nine of their ten total wins are by finish combined. And five first round finishes for Matthews. But... He's got that dreaded win his second to last time out. Oh. He beat Jay Ellis. And listen, Jeremy Urshak couldn't do it, but a lot of men have. Like, over 90 have done it. So, big opportunity there, but I think it's going to be a fun fight for Otis Ward. This feels like one of those fights where no matter what happens to the winner, they get a developmental contract and not the real UFC contract. I know they haven't done that as much lately. That was very much a Season 1 and Season 2 platform, but right now I could see them doing that for Marshall or Matthews, because like you said, it feels like an Ultimate Fighter fight, because I'd like to see them two, three, four more times against some kind of regional levels of talent, because I do really like Marshall's wrestling. I think that's a good X factor that you bring to the cage. And for Connor Matthews, he has nice striking when he is able to put his combinations together to their fullest effect but again they're both these skill sets that i'd like to see a few more times before they get that shot at the bigger show so you look at that fight and then we focus in on this one and for francis marshall it really was wrestling that won in that fight against matthews and for matthews a little bit of a backstory or a little bit more on it he was a first round finisher type of fighter so it's kind of interesting that we go back to that video because i know you had talked about the fact it kind of felt like an ultimate fighter fight both guys were five and oh marshall ends up getting the contract he's in the ufc and well who do you book him with and they went with marcelo rojo who has a ton of experience and he was on the ultimate fighter latin america season three he lost to claudio poyas i saw the highlight floating around on twitter where he throws the flying knee hits him with a flying knee and then gets taken down by poyas but when you do look at it for rojo all of that experience, the two fights in the UFC, both of them losses against really good levels exactly. of competition. Charles Jourdain and uh, Kyler Phillips as well. And some of the fights that have fallen out for him, fights against Kevin Kroom, BKFC legend, uh, Jonathan Martinez and Daniel Willicat. Like, you look at those names and... It's just kind of weird to see that for Rojo to be taking on a guy like Francis Marshall. You just worry about how much Rojo has left in the tank, or at least I do, because he's been fighting with this style his whole entire career. It's not like he just became an action fighter when he came to the UFC. This is a guy no, who left... Campbell, a... Campbell McLaren was able to squeeze the lemon. Exactly. And it really comes down to how much juice is now left in that lemon. Like, it has very much been discarded. Like, I don't know if you guys have country markets where you guys live, but they make orange juice at these places, and it's the greatest thing ever. It is worth whatever price they put on it but you always see in the back there's just a bunch of boxes full of squeezed lemons anyways or uh, oranges we're, with Rojo, I do worry about the amount of damage he has taken. Like, think back to the pictures that came out after he fought Charles Jordan. He looked like the elephant man. His eyes were closed. His nose was broken. That is damage that you don't ever really come back from. I know the swelling goes away. The bones get set. But you can't continue to fight like that for the rest of your life. And I know Marshall might not be the guy who takes advantage of some of those aspects. Maybe he isn't as heavy-handed as some of those guys that you have mentioned. Because you're right. If you're 0-2 against guys like Kyler Phillips and uh, Charles Jordan, it's no shame whatsoever. You just gotta worry about how much he has left in the tank because for Rojo he does start to war he starts to wind down as the fight goes on. Marshall the last time out like you had mentioned faced a first round finisher. This time it's a very different test. He's facing another primary striker but Rojo can take the fight much later. The question I have though is how much can Rojo still put his foot on the gas because I feel like the more he lets go with his own offense it's going to make him more susceptible to not only the takedown but the shot on the feet too. So I guess for me it just comes down to 
how much does Rojo still have left? Well, and if you look at it for Francis Marshall, a guy that trains out of a gym that you might be surprised by right there, Pellegrino MMA. His dad brought him there when he was 13. So he started training in MMA. Then he started training in wrestling. So he wrestled in high school and now it's all come together. And I mean, you know, he's young. He's 23 years old. Got his, got his whole life ahead of him. And if you look at it, his nickname on certain sites, but the UFC haven't carried it over, is Francis Fire Marshal. And he's actually a full-time fireman. For this camp, I listened I to an interview was. by John Eric Poli over with My MMA News. My gosh, that guy's professional. Like, full suit and tie doing the interviews. And it was a really good one, so go check it out. You gotta give props where you can. But he said that he was able to kind of take off from firefighting to get ready for this fight. But there's gonna be some of the guys from the station make the trip down to Orlando to watch oh, him fight. So I thought that was really cool. But if you listen to it for Marshall and you look at it training out of Pellegrino, I mean, Pellegrino had 10 fights in the UFC, and what was he known for? Wrestling and jiu-jitsu. What's Francis Marshall known for? Wrestling, taking her back, and getting rear naked chokes. And of his overall wins, five as an amateur, six as a pro, undefeated in all of them, six of them by submission, five of them by rear naked choke, and he does take the back. And for Rojo, you can see it on screen, six wins by submission, but if I scroll down to the losses, five losses by exactly. submission. So it is a little weird that way, but I will say this, Matt, and the reason why I set it up at the start this way, and I want to kind of carry that conversation on just for a bit, if I may, for Marshall, in that fight that he had on Contender Series, he struggled mightily in the striking in the first round. He just kind of kept his head on the center line, got punched down. He didn't really have any answers for the striking. He's got a decent one, too, but it's all to get the takedown and then threaten with. He's got good ground and pound, and again, like I said, he likes to take the back. Struggled with that, and then in the third round, when his opponent was gassed, he really took over, but it was with his striking, and I don't see him having those successes in a fight like this against Marcelo Rojo. So, again, for Rojo, struggled against Charles Jordan. He did have some moments in that fight, and his okay. last win that he had by submission was way back a long time ago in 2017. If you look at his last time out, only the eighth uh, triangle armbar in UFC history by Kyler Phillips. So you don't see that very often, but for Marshall, it, it just, for Rojo, Seems like a big step down to Marshall. For Marshall, it's a big step up for Matthews in this one. I think for Rojo, though, it is warranted. Like, at a certain point, you can't just keep on feeding the guy killers. What are they going to do? Wait for John Lineker to come back and feed him to Rojo? Like, for Rojo... Andra Andrade, that's what they got to do. I guess. It just, for Rojo, I, I do like the step down for him. And for Marshall, you're right. Since he is so young, maybe we will continue to see so many different sides of him and an evolution in his game. Because he does feel like a fighter that once he is able to add, maybe not a complete striking repertoire, but again, Marvin Vittori tends to be the fighter who we reference when it's, hey, you have this great grappling package, your striking is good but not great against the elite strikers, so what do you have to get good at? Striking your way into the clinch and then taking your opponent down. If Marshall can show the ability to just defend his, or to, ah, defend himself from the big shot of Can't Rojo, cut that when it's live. You can't. Uh, then I do think Rojo could have some success. I just, I do think this is going to be a tale of two very different fights, because you're right. Marshall did not look very good on the feet his last time out, especially early on. He did seem kind of robotic, and that's the issue. Rojo Rojo does move quite well on the feet, especially early on in the fight. He is willing to throw a lot of combinations. So, again, my real question mark is, how much can Marshall improve between every single fight? And how much does Rojo still have left in the tank? Because I know he's not the oldest guy in the world, but you can't really judge fighters by how old they are by when they were born. It's really the amount of tough fights that they've been in. And Rojo has been in so many tough fights, <laughs> it is getting uncountable. Dave Baker's in the chat, always out there with the picks. I've got Marshall here, can't stick around for long. Great job, as always, guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank Never you. heard the nickname Pitbull before from Drew. Yeah, that one's a little so, overused. So overused the brothers pick it. Who's your favorite pit bull? I know it isn't overused. Andre Arlovsky. Thank you. That's who my pick was going to be. Francis Good Marshall call. open it even. He's a minus 163 favorite. Marcelo Rojo open minus 110 plus 135. Where has he been training for this camp? It's been training in the States. So we'll see how that one plays out for him. If you have a look at the topology mat, votes, Matt, see, can't cut this stuff. Tough. Surprise to us that it is to you. This is going to be a lot of talking, folks. I'm going to say over, under, 70% Marshall. I don't know if everybody's going to be I think it's going to be over. Or, sorry, under. Under. It's over. Wow. So, 1,883 total votes. 82% Marshall. 39% by decision. 46% by submission. For the 18% that have Rojo, 48% by knockout. 37% by decision. So, we haven't really made a pick on this one yet. Who, who are you going with? 
I like Marshall in this fight, but I think he's going to face a lot of adversity. I don't think it's just going to be a matter of him getting on top of Rojo, grounding him out, and then maybe getting a submission afterwards. But I do like him as this fight goes late. That's the thing about Rojo. If he is going to have a lot of success, he is a great striker, don't get me wrong. But he's not necessarily a one-hitter quitter on the feet. No. He is going to use a lot of volume to get you out of there. So maybe he can have success, especially early on in this fight. But I think that the more success he has without getting a finish is going to start to drain his own gas tank. And if that is the case, Marshall's a guy who can come on late especially with his grappling so I think if Marshall does get on top of him maybe he is down two rounds which is not a place I'd want to be <laughs> but still maybe he is down two rounds I like his grappling that much especially with his top game with his ability to strike his way into a submission and that's the thing too his grappling feeds into itself he's not just going to try to you know play around on top kind of Jake shields you he does have very effective ground and pound from the guard and the half guard too and I think that can open up a submission opportunity as this fight goes late behind the curtain before the video we were kind of talking like Wonder Boy Holland what is a win do actually no we said that on here and like you've got guys like Bilal Muhammad Sean Brady I see this fight like Bilal Muhammad Sean Brady and Brady in this case is Marshall like he's a guy that the striking is continuing to develop he's only 23 he's got a squeaky clean record takedowns are great submissions are great I just I don't know how he's going to make out against the resistance uh like he will face when he takes on a guy like Rojo he was able to come out clean against Matthews and he looked really good in that win and what was it 30 26 30 27 27 or maybe there were two 30 26s peppered in there he looked great in that fight and he's looked great against the lower level competition like he fought Ray Trujillo that's fought everybody on the regional scene but for Rojo the thing that I love in a matchup like this He's hot and heavy on leg kicks. And he's a guy that will continue to attack that lead leg. Did it against Chaudin. Got finished in the third round. Did it against Kyler Phillips in that fight. I don't know what Francis Marshall looks like when he switches stances. That's my big key to this fight. So for me... I'm going to go with Marcelo Rojo in this one. Hot dogs. Honestly, boys, this flow works better. It's way too hard for us to talk for an hour and a half on these. We'll see how it goes. But listen, we're split on the pick. I've got Rojo. Matt going with Francis Marshall. Big suck of wind. And then we it's get a in. fun fight, though. It is a fun fight.